If you've got a problem with your inner ear, it can cause dizziness and sickness and vertigo and all kinds of horrible problems. Thankfully, even though these problems are common, they can often be fixed. And I'm gonna show you just how to do that today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And today I'm gonna to be showing you some great exercises that can help you to fix your inner ear. Now, before I show you these exercises, I just wanted to let you know that they are not suitable for everyone. Do make sure you get checked out by your doctor before you give them a try. And if they cause you any discomfort or sickness or pain, just avoid them. Anyway, let's have a look at the exercises now. So we're gonna go through some nice vestibular exercises to help you fix your inner ear. I'm gonna show you a few different exercises, but not all of these are gonna be perfect for you. So you don't have to do them all. Just do the ones that feel comfortable. Avoid the ones that make you feel a little bit unwell, because sometimes that can happen if the inner ear is not functioning very well. And just stick with the ones that feel okay to do. So we're gonna start off basic. I'm gonna get, gonna get more advanced as we go. And the inner ear works very closely with the eyes. So the first few exercises we're gonna be doing involve the eyes and the head. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna train our eyes on the finger like this. So the finger is the point that I want you to look at and it's gonna be fixed in front of you like this. The first thing we're gonna try and do is keep your eyes on the finger and turn your head to one side. Go as far as you can, keeping your eyes on the finger and then turn back to the center and then repeat going the other way like this. Now it's important that we've got something reasonably close to the face to focus on because that just makes it slightly harder. And if this hurts your eyes or hurts your neck, you don't have to take your head as far as I am. Just take it as far as feels comfortable. But what we're gonna try and do is go five repetitions in each location. And if you want to make this a bit harder, you can bring it really close. For me, that feels harder. That's more of a strain on the eyes, but obviously it's helping me to focus more like this. You can move your finger away and try and keep your eyes on it as you go. You'll find that you'll just about lose control of where your eyes can look when you get there. And then once you've done five on each side, we're gonna switch to the next exercise, which is very similar, but we're gonna put that into reverse. So now we're gonna keep the head still and the eyes are gonna track the finger. So this time the finger's gonna move. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move the finger, keep the head still and keep your eyes on the finger as you move. So it's just the eyes doing the moving now. We're gonna take that finger as far to one side as we can and then back the other way. So this is a super vestibular exercise because the vestibular system helps to control the stability of your balance as your eyes and your head are moving. And for people who suffer with dizziness, what's often happening is those systems aren't working very well together. So this type of exercise can really help. Now, if you wanna make this a bit harder, you can move in an arc like this. You can speed up the movement of your finger too. And you're really focusing on trying to track that finger without losing control and without losing focus with your eyes on the finger. So once you've done a few repetitions of that, we can move on to the next one. And this one is the classic policeman's test, the finger to nose. I don't know why they do this for balance, but it seems to be in all the movies, so it always reminds me of that. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take two fingers this time. They're gonna go out to the side. Again, we're gonna keep our head totally stable, and we're just gonna look at the finger with our eyes, and we're gonna watch it come in and land on the nose and then back out, okay? And then this time we'll turn this way, watch this finger come in, land on the nose, and then back out. You might find yourself going a little bit cross-eyed as it comes in and back out. And we're focusing on keeping that head as stable as possible, keeping your eye on the finger, almost like a bee coming in, landing on your nose, and then going back out again. So again, another funny little exercise, but really good for the vestibular system. I struggled there to keep my eyes focused. So again, keep it on there and then back out. It doesn't have to go as fast as I am. You can make it nice and slow if you want to, if you're having trouble keeping that focus and then back out again. And again, you might repeat five on each side and then we're gonna move on to the next exercise. So the next exercise we're gonna work on takes it up a notch and now we're gonna work on changing height position whilst keeping our eyes fixed. 
So this is called the bend to ground with eyes fixed. And what we're gonna do is just pick something in the room to look at. I'm gonna look at a certain point on the tripod for the camera there. We're gonna keep our eyes fixed on that point as we go down, touch the ground, and then come back up, nice and easy. And how you get down to the ground is totally up to you. If you want to use less knees, because you've got funny knees, you can do it like that. If you want to use more knees, you can do it like a proper squat like that, but keeping your eyes fixed on the thing is key. Then choose something else, and again, keep your eyes fixed, choose something else, come down, touch, keep your eyes fixed, choose something else, come back up like this, something else. Now the importance of this exercise is that we're changing height position, and that is challenging the vestibular system in a different way. So try and do this nice and slowly, because some people find that they'll do a couple of these and then they'll start to get a little bit dizzy, maybe a little bit queasy. If that's happening, just pause, wait for those feelings to go away, and then you can try again. And if they don't go away after that second time, probably avoid this exercise for the moment, but keep trying it every few days just to see if your system is improving, which means it's okay to go again. So again, we're not trying to really like push into any resistance or pain. We're not trying to cause ourselves a dizziness. We're trying to keep that vestibular control throughout without making ourselves feel unwell because that isn't really that beneficial. So once you've done that, we're gonna move on to the next exercise. Before we go any further, I just want to tell you about 3-Tip Friday. 3-Tip Friday is my weekly email that I send out to my list and it features three of the most interesting things I found that week. It could be a health tip, it could be a piece of research I'm reading, or it could be a new tool that I've found to be really useful for helping people get more mobile. It's totally free, I just send it out once a week, there's no annoying promos inside, and you can sign up for it by going down below this video and entering your email in the 3-Tip Friday link. So to make this next exercise work, we're now gonna use a chair and we're gonna do a variation of the sit to stand, which is one of my favorite exercises. But in this context, we're actually gonna do it slightly differently. So the sit to stand is very simple. You're gonna stand with the backs of your legs touching the chair. You're gonna reverse down by bending the hips and the knees, and then slowly coming down to a sitting position. To come back up, we can do it a bit quicker because the concentric phase can be faster, and we want the eccentric phase to be nice and slow like that, okay? So that's the simple version, but to make this a vestibular exercise, we're gonna do it with our eyes closed. So, shut your eyes like this, you can start with your hands out the way, come and stand up like this, as tall as you can, keep your legs in contact with the chair, and then we're gonna start to bend and slowly, slowly drop down. Now, if you're doing the sit to stand correctly, it's totally safe to do it like this, because you're sticking your bottom out at the back, which means that your weight is kind of behind you, your center of gravity, which means that even if you lose control, you're just gonna drop back into the chair, you're not gonna topple forwards. Now on the way up, we can bring nose over toes and stand up like this. You should still have a nice center of gravity in the middle of your body. And here now, coming back down, my center of gravity is going backwards, but my job is to just slowly control it to come to a rest. Now we're doing it slow on the way down, a bit quicker on the way up. So again, stick the bottom out, bend those knees, keep that, the, the leg in contact with the chair if you can, and then come down. Now it feels kind of funny doing that, and that's again because we're making the vestibular system go from high to low to high to low. And that's gonna improve your sense of where you are in space, which can be really good for the inner ear. Now the sit to stand can be quite taxing for some people, so just work in sets of five or 10. A couple of sets over is absolutely fine, same as the other exercises in this video. Little and often tends to work really, really well. And then the final exercise we're gonna do here for your vestibular system is called the walk with head turn. And for this exercise, you need to make sure you're safe because I've had people doing this and getting quite wobbly. So the ideal place to do this would be in a narrow corridor, so you've got walls either side. If you haven't got that, then put yourself next to the kitchen worktop and have your hand hovering just in case you lose your balance so you can grab hold. You can also put some chairs the other side of you so it doesn't matter if you wobble left or right, you're still going to be safe. So this is a lovely vestibular exercise because it's very relevant to keeping your balance when walking. So this is how it looks. We're gonna start slowly walking and as we, look, as we walk, we're gonna to look to one side 
and then the other. Now I've only got a short walkway here, so I'm doing it almost in slow-mo, but you're basically trying to keep your head moving as you walk whilst keeping control of that steady walking gait. So again, as you start to walk, you're gonna turn your head one way and then look the other way. You can feel that as the head turns, your stability does sometimes become a little bit, bit compromised. So that's why we wanna have something to grab hold of. But this is a great challenge for the vestibular system. Now, I always think about balance and the vestibular system. If we're not making it hard enough so that we feel like we're a little bit wobbly, it's probably not improving. Remember, your body doesn't really want to change. So if you don't challenge it, it isn't gonna change, it's gonna stay the same. And if you've got quite poor balance, you actually need to practice it to the point where you're a little bit wobbly in order for it to get better. But if you do that consistently over time, that set point where you become wobbly gets better and better and better, and that's how you improve. So I'd recommend doing five or six lengths of turning head walks. When you start to feel a little bit dizzy or wobbly, just stop, let it pass, and then you can resume. Do that a couple of times a day and it's gonna make a massive difference to your balance and your vestibular system. So those are some of my favorite exercises to help you fix your inner ear. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this kind of content, do drop a comment below because I always read them and it does help us to improve these videos. So thank you very much if you do that. And if you want to get more from me, you can pick up a copy of my book. It's called Thriving Beyond 50 and it's got loads more exercises and advice like the stuff you found in this video. So thank you if you picked that up as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and I'll speak to you on the next.